to the gallery by the seashore. It's the American avant-garde. Well, of course, that's not true. Everything is pre-recorded. We met Carl Cragstead in 2005 when we, when we put on the very first stiff and he came and covered it for his TV show. Carl is one of the original guerrilla filmmakers and marketers in Seattle. And he's actually got this great story about being sued by the city of Seattle for putting up posters that's in the bonus section of this DVD. Um, we all owe Carl a great deal of gratitude. Every time we put up a movie poster or a poster about a music event or a film festival or anything like that, the fact that we can do that is has a great deal to do with the fact that Carl was put through the ringer by the city. And and so he's now got this TV show called The American Avant-Garde that he puts together with Peter Morris. And I spent a few minutes just talking to these guys about the TV show. So uh, check this out, it's a lot of fun. I came in on show 18. No, show 16 of season one. Ah, that would be the Gus Van Sant show on season one. No, actually it was the Von Piglet sisters. That would be 18. But that was what you gave me first, but then Peter suddenly... Peter doesn't have a memory. Suddenly, the Gus Van Sant interview came in and it wasn't really up to snuff. And you said, Peter, yeah. fix no, this. That's that's right. Mm. You fixed the Van Sant thing. How did you guys meet? How did, how did you come on board? It was in a sex club, I think. No, no, it wasn't. Oh. Uh, it was because uh, of Melissa Dow. That's right. And we, we you came on to Great Uncle Jimmy in 2001. That, that was the so first good. time I ever met you. Yes. Of course, I assume that he was an idiot, like they all are. But uh, over time, I realized that he had, well, First a talent. And, um, Pretty true. Yeah, and, and now we are... Uh, well, we're like twins now. It's just we're joined at the hip, <laughs> except he doesn't have a black jacket, no. and he's got a thing that says Peter. Mm. Well... <clears throat> It, I, I used to try and describe it as, as a magazine, a TV magazine of um, interviews and clips and, and goofy, you know, cartoons and things. Um, but it's, it's, it, it, it has more than that, really. It's, it's really trying to, to be, you know, a poke in the eye at um, a lot of the <clears throat> bland, um, formulaic, uh, interviewing an artist type programs. So. Fortunately, with someone like Carl, it's quite easy to just really ramp up the personality and... Um... Well, we found some pretty good lepers to interview. <laughs> yeah. It's not like they're not out there. I know. So it's like, uh, it's not just Carl, it's these other poor fools who make films and videos. Yeah, but you, need the, you, you and... need the spark. You need you need people to come alive as opposed to just, I'm an artist and, oh, really, and this is your latest well, film. Well, normally, normally, these this plethora of absolute and unbelievable talent doesn't get a chance to be, even be interviewed. And their, their films show, That's and true. they show in various ways, but at least we can put them on television yep. where there's a rather huge audience. Um, what I want to know is with Stiff, when, when you've done, when you've given somebody a great platform, do they ever write you, email you, yeah. call you, thank you? Hmm. It, we, we don't Sometimes. get much, <laughs> we get very little feedback yeah. from people that we do shows with that are just uh. staggering shows. And you go, well, and we send them the DVD and you go, did they get the DVD? Do they care? I, I, I think it might be a function of age. If you're old, uh, you always, you've been taught to write a thank you letter. Right. Uh, but um, boy, you know, we don't, we don't know yeah, we... what people think about the show. Uh, send thank you letters. You should send yeah. thank you letters. Yeah. But 